Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome to Teleglitch. Now, Teleglitch is a very interesting game. I'm going to skip our intro here. Or not, why not? We'll stick around with it. Militech Corporation Database Access Entry. Military Research and Training Facility Number 2097. Location, Planet Medusa 1C. Deep Space Region. Distance to Earth, 30 light years. Tele research fields, teleportation technologies, necrotic tissue activation technologies, genetic research and cloning for military purposes, military exp experimentation and training for robots and other non-human combatants. Last sinister updates. Report on teleportation experiment error. Report on facility administration AIML function. Emergency signal received. Request for military rescue team. Rescue team sent. Spatial anomalies detected. Communication lost shortly after arrival. All personnel and rescue team assumed dead. All operations abandoned due to negative profit outlook. Planet Medusa 1C quarantined indefinitely. And that is what we get into here. Teleglitch! It is a top-down shooter, uh, roguelike basically, where you have no character progression but plenty of loot to find and enemies to destroy, areas to explore, and secrets to uncover. We're gonna jump straight into the game here because it's easier to explain what we're looking at it instead of looking at a blank screen, so here we go. We were working on a master teleporter that could transport you anywhere, to unlimited distances. But something went wrong. Something came through from the other side. First, we thought it was a minor glitch, but it quickly turned into a nightmare. The facility AI became aggressive and the military robots turned on us. The space of the complex started warping. Rooms and hallways would randomly reorganize themselves as if following some twisted pattern. I decided to seal myself in here and wait for help. I've been hiding out here for weeks. But nobody came, and I'm running out of food. My only chance is to use the regular teleporters in the facility to get to the master teleporter, and then teleport myself back to Earth. And that's where we find ourselves in this game. We are this little green dude. He's got a stabby knife, and he has got himself a gun. We're gonna grab ourselves these cans on the ground, because everything you find in this game winds up being useful for the most part. There are some exceptions, but still. So we start off here with a 9mm pistol with 60 rounds, we can use that to kill people if we need to at range. We have 4 pieces of explosive, there are 250 grams of explosive material, and we have 4 empty cans. While the empty cans might not sound like much right now, they will wind up being quite useful later on. So, we'll escape our barricade here, we can push our way through all this debris, and enter the facility proper. Now we've already found our first enemy. These enemies are plan plankton-based mutants, which are terrible abominations of war. But thankfully, these ones are pretty weak. We can stab them pretty effectively with our knife. It takes two stabs to kill them, and it's much more effective than using our explosives against them, or our bullets, because we kind of want to save those for more powerful enemies later. And we got lucky. We already found a canned meat just lying on the ground. Canned meat is a healing item. It's very useful. It doesn't heal a whole lot in any, any one go, but it does let you bypass the maximum health cap, which is pretty interesting. We got a zombie here, fast moving, still only takes two stabs to destroy. We found our first secret as well. Can meat heals you for 10 health though, and then has the interesting capability of healing you above 100 health, up to a maximum of 150, unlike any other healing item. Unfortunately though, it does taste like cardboard and stays edible for 200 years, so it must not be of great quality. So, we found ourselves our first secret here as well. You can see these cracks in the walls occasionally, and those indicate that things nearby can be destroyed. Now, we're probably going to come back here later, because I don't want to use my explosives on this. I'll wait till I find our first adhesive grenade launcher, then come back and use that to open it. Uh-oh. Oh boy, that was a bad place, situation to be in just then. Alright, this is not great. There's a lot of enemies right off the bat. We're going to try and stab as many of them as we can, taking as little damage as possible, but we're probably going to take home with even more of them. Probably going to take at least down to 90 health here, if we're, unless we're quite lucky with them not getting hits off on us while we kite them. Oop, nope, ow, ow, we're down below 90, that's what I kind of expected. Ouch, that was a lot of enemies all of a sudden. <laughs> and that kind of thing can happen, there's more. These guys are vicious and they will come hunt you down a lot of the time. Now, some enemies will stay in their areas until you get close, but other ones seem to patrol around the map and will come and find you if you give them the opportunity. So they must have been up here. Well, there is a crate. We're looking for crates all throughout the area that have some explosives in it, so that'll be useful later. As we find them, we'll be able to gain access to new weapons and tools and ingredients for making other things later on. Let's keep looking around here. So we know there's a secret back here. We found that one already. We can use our map as freely as we like to help us explore new areas, but... Oh, more enemies. But we want to be careful not to overwhelm ourselves by getting too far into enemy territory. Ugh. 
while we're being chased. So it's a very good thing to make sure you're backtracking into a territory you've already explored so you're not running into the middle of new enemies all the time. And there's nothing in here after all. Unfortunate. There are many rooms like that which have consoles in them, which have information for the player, because there is a fairly significantly uh, detailed backstory to this area. Ah, we keep getting hit. We're already down to 80 health. That's not great. But uh, a lot of it... There's a tube. We'll take that. A lot of it is hidden away in these consoles, and once you've read them once, it doesn't force you to read them again. This is the one that appears every time. The Teleglitch Space-Time Anomaly. Initial Analysis Summary. These blobs of black and colorful anomalies seem to be the only result of today's experiment with unlimited range teleportation. We've been investigating this phenomenon for the past two hours and think it might have profound implications for theoretical physics. The blackness seems to be literally an inside-out space-time curvature and opens a range of possibilities for research. My colleague has already suggested we could weaponize it by capturing the field into super-intense wave and pressure containers to be used for planetary bombardment. Oh, and if you touch it, your brain explodes. So that's a thing. This is the teleglitch right over here, this weird anomaly. We can use that to our advantage in some areas by leading enemies into it, but if anyone touches it, they instantly die. And we found the exit already. Wonderful. There's a medkit 50, which is a very nice thing, and some more explosives. So, we can rearrange our inventory by holding E on items and moving them around. Medkit 50s are great because they heal you for 50 health, which is a massive boost. But unlike canned foods, they can't go over the predetermined 100 health limit. We're going to go back, though. We don't want to leave just yet because there's plenty more to find in this place, not to mention the secret area we already discovered and any other potential secrets in this map. Now, a lot of the Area 1 secrets aren't great. They're things like can guns and nail bombs, which you don't want because they're more dangerous to you, practically, than they are to your enemies. But we're going to look around and try and find as many of them as we can anyway because you never know what's actually hidden away in there. There's another teleglitch at the bottom. We might be able to lead some enemies into that. Come on now, friend. You're going to come down here and die in this teleglitch. Oop. There we go. Let's see if we can get him in there too. There we go. Easy to, enough to kill these guys off in those things. There's a big area over here though. Very large indeed. Hmm. I'd quite like to find that adhesive grenade launcher soon though because it's my favorite way of opening up secret areas. There it is. Alright, we got ourselves some 9mm ammo and an adhesive grenade launcher. So we're going to bring this thing back down to the beginning, then we'll come back here afterwards, because we want to make sure that anything that's good in there, we get access to immediately. If there's a shotgun in that room, for example, we might want it in case we get hit with a swarm, or anything such as that. Let's get down this way, though, and take a look in that wall. Alright, adhesive grenade launcher, we will aim you at the wall, fire two grenades, that's what it takes to get them down. There we go, and what's in here? Another wall, that's unfortunate. Hopefully something good in here, because we're wasting basically half of our adhesive grenade launcher, and it's just got a can gun in it. You jerks. Well, we're going to leave the can gun there, because it's actually a really, really bad item for us. Can guns are kind of cool items, because they're directional explosives. They kind of work like a shotgun, except it's literally a bomb exploding in that direction. Which is very powerful, but unfortunately for us, it also does a significant amount of damage to the player, which means they're really not all that great for our purposes. We'll grab a box of nails and some more 9mm ammo. We should wind up with a lot of 9mm ammo by the time we're done here. That's basically our goal. The first two floors are resource gathering experiments. Stab these guys as they approach. There we go. If we keep kiting them, we can kill them off pretty safely without taking too much damage. We want to try and do that as much as possible. It's mostly when they come in larger numbers that are harder to deal with. This looks like another secret room to me. Yeah, it definitely is. So let's take out our grenade launcher again. This is probably the nail bomb, but we'll take a look anyway. It is a nail bomb, but it's also shotgun shells. So we'll take the shotgun shells and leave the nail bomb. Because the shotgun shells will be useful later. Ammo is always good. Whereas a nail bomb is a, uh, <coughs> an explosive that when you fire it, it fires like projectiles, which are nails, of course in all directions, which means it generally winds up hurting you more than whatever you're trying to blow up with it would anyway. So, not my favorite weapon. Here we found some more shotgun shells, so I'll grab those. And what's in this crate? More 9mm ammo and grenades. That's very nice. That helps replenish our grenade launcher supplies. We should reload that now. Help us get in more secret rooms. What's this? We found more explosives. No, not all of these disrupted rocks are actually secrets, and this one I'm pretty sure is not. So we're going to leave it there. But sometimes they are. It can be pretty tricky to tell them apart a lot of the time. A lot of these areas are actually just barriers, and there's nothing uh, hidden behind them at all. Alright. Hello. We found some more enemies. A lot of these rooms aren't going to have much in them. 
but we have to look everywhere, even if it does have enemies within, because there's potential for good stuff, so we have to take a look anyway. Now, killing all these mutants is generally a good job anyway, because the mutants have a chance of dropping canned meats. I'm not sure if it's on every floor or if it's only some of the time, but having access to more healing items for the risk of maybe taking two damage, getting ten back, is pretty good. Another teleglitch over there, so we'll have to watch out for that. Let's keep going. Oh, that's a lot of enemies. Alright, we're trying to take use of this teleglitch. Ow. Goodbye. <laughs> that made that a lot easier. Now, if those guys die and drop items, the items will be dropped on the edge of the teleglitch, so you can still pick them up safely. It's not like they're lost forever, so there is a... Uh, there's no real penalty to trying to use that to kill your enemies. Anything in here? More rooms. We found the exit really early in this floor, which is very unusual. Ah, this is one of the rooms I was definitely looking for. This is canned food storage. We have four free canned meats here. Very nice. And 9mm ammo and a box of nails. Alright. So, let's keep going. More rooms to explore down here. Enemies? Nope, nothing. That's one of those console rooms. Also, that ticking sound is the sound of electrical generators. We'll hear that in a lot of different areas in this game. And while it can be quite loud sometimes, that's all it's indicating, is that you're near electrical generators. So there's an area back here, near uh, near this part of the map we have to go back to, because we missed a pathway back there earlier. But I think beyond that, we're pretty much good at this point, so let's keep going. There might be one more secret in this area as well that we might miss. I believe that's where the shotgun is. For now, we're just going to keep looking, though, and hopefully we'll find it. Shotgun might be on floor two as well, so it's hard to say for sure. I can never remember where some of the specifics are. Let's keep going. I do like this game, though, and I've played it quite a bit. As it is very difficult. There's the shotgun. Alright, it wasn't in a secret room. I knew it was somewhere on this map, though. There we go. That'll come in handy. This is a very good crowd control weapon, although it does very little damage to bigger enemies. It's great for dealing with mobs. And we have another room here with another piece of explosive, and that is everything on the floor, I think. Let's go back and see if there's anything else worth finding, but I think that's probably everything. All right, we will take it. And I just want to double check something in this room. Is there anything in this wall? No. Put the wall up above. It's always good to go back and look for secrets if you're suspicious about something because finding them is a massive boon. Ah, that's right. That's a television anomaly room. Right. So we've made it up to here. Fantastic. And there's a console here always, which will tell us where we can go. Going the teleporter on the right brings us to the abandoned plankton farm. Going left brings us to the military biology sector. It doesn't really matter too much which one we go to, because uh, they're fairly similar. But let's go to the plankton farm this time, which I believe is the pathway on the right. Yes. So, plankton farm it is. Here we go. Apparently we just got an achievement there, Death Pudding Matador, which I assume is for bringing like a hundred or whatever people to their deaths in the teleglitch. The situation is bad. Non-human combatants are everywhere, and they attack me on sight. I'm going to try and move through the Plankton Farm Complex next. That sector was used to feed a type of military critters we were cloning and developing about eight years ago. However, the sector was abandoned after the critter project ended. The perfect war animal prototype was shipped away with its design blueprints for production and there was no need for producing extra plankton anymore. If I'm lucky, the sector should still be deserted, and I might be able to slip through unnoticed. Well, we'll see about that, won't we? And that is a level complete. So, it tells us our accuracy, which is zero, because we didn't actually shoot anybody. We found two secrets, we didn't combine any items, we dropped eight monsters into the void, and we killed a total of 27 creatures. Very nice. So... I'm going to quickly check the time here. I think we've only been playing for like 10 minutes because the first area is pretty short. We'll probably do the first and the second levels this episode, and then we'll keep going after that. So I'll be right back. Yeah, it's only about 15 minutes. So we're going to keep going here and explore into the next level. Here we go. And we arrive. Teleporting into a new area with new challenges ahead. All right. What do we have here? We have a little box already. What's inside? Machine gun bullets and a medkit 25. Interesting. We don't have a machine gun yet, but I'll definitely take the ammunition. Hmm. Not a lot in here. We're going to be very careful, of course, as always. More machine gun bullets, more grenades. We'll take all the ammo we can get our hands on. Oh, and we have a big enemy. All right. This is the first enemy we're going to have to shoot. Because this guy hurts if he touches you. And he takes more bullets. There we go. 
Unfortunate to have to waste bolts on the two guys beside him as well, but I didn't want to risk him getting close, because if that big brown mutant hits you, you take 10 damage. That's a lot more significant than the two from the other... Woo! That guy's also bad. Ow, 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 ow. Die, die. These guy's throwing things at us, which is not nice. We're going to take a lot of damage here already, jeez. All right. We got hit by one of the rocks, too, I think. Ow. This sucks. Come on, just get stabbed. Ow. Ow. That really hurt. Holy cow. And this is why this game is so hard. Everything is out to kill you. The big mutant that we saw there throws basically uh, rocks at you. In the lore, he's throwing fake grenades as a training weapon. But, uh, yeah, they hurt. So, we're down really low on health. We're going to spend our medkit 50, unfortunately. Bam! Bring ourselves back up to 98 health. And that will bring us in a much better state. Now, I think we're also just going to eat a bunch of canned meats as well to bring us up higher, so we don't have to worry about our health situation for a while. There we go, because empty cans are very useful, and we can easily bring ourselves up to 148 health, which will mean we're safer for a long time in the early game. Now, let's keep looking around and see what else we can find. So, apparently there's a chest over here. That's what that symbol means. But there are enemies over here as well. That's fine, though. They're not too dangerous looking. I'm going to stab the little plankton mutants. There we go. Got ourselves another med kit and some more boxes of nails. Very nice. Ooh, another canned meat. Uh oh. Come on. There we go. Down you go. No damage taken. More explosives and a machine gun. Excellent. I like to hold on to the machine gun for later in the game because it, you can wind up with a really nicely large amount of ammo for it, which means you can deal with bigger enemies, bigger crowds pretty effectively. Now I'm just checking around because you never know where the secrets are hidden in this game. Whoop, hello. Ow. Two hits against that zombie. The zombies are really fast moving, which makes them quite difficult to knife effectively. But it's always worth trying, because saving the ammo in the early game is very useful. These guys aren't so bad if they hit us. But those bigger bigger enemies who start doing 10 damage or throwing rocks at you, people with guns, those are enemies you don't want to let hit you. So we want to keep our bullets to make sure we have enough for them. Now, let's work our way up here, see what else we can find. All right. We found ourselves a console, which is unusual, and there's a big enemy. All right, stab this guy. Whoop. There we go. Stab this guy too. I'm gonna try and matador the big guy until we can kill the little ones. Come on now. Cause I don't want to get hit by him at any costs. If I can help it. Come on now. There we go. Now, carefully shoot him in the face until he stops moving. There we go. Whew. We're safe, I think. Let's check this console. Teleporter location marked on map. All right, that's very nice. Tells us where we need to go, and at the moment, it looks like it's right down there at the bottom. All right, we'll keep going up then, because there's no reason for us to go straight for the teleporter anyway. Let's see if we can find any more, ooh, secrets. So, grenade launcher it is. Pop open that secret wall for us, please. There we go, what's inside? Shotgun shells and a meat trap? No, another nail bomb. I don't want nail bombs, game. Put that down over there. They're just so dangerous to use, I don't think it's actually worth keeping them. And they don't combine into anything, as far as I can tell, so it's not even worthwhile having them in your inventory for later. Alright. Alright, we should reload the uh, grenade launcher. Everything else should be fully loaded, yes? Good? Alright, onwards we go. What's in this room? Little enemies? Alright, stab them. Ow. Took a little bit of damage there, but that's what we're going to expect to have happen repeatedly in this early game. Come on now. There we go. You're taken down. Very nice. Is that a key? Something dropped something over here? No, I thought I saw a circle blinking and I was thinking there might have been canned food or something on the ground that got dropped. Ow. Some damage from these guys again. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that you attack with your right hand, so if you want to be attacking someone directly in front of you, you want to aim down a bit so that you make sure you hit them and don't swipe over their heads like that. More enemies. Ah, you're a big guy. All right. Uh oh, that's three misses, not good. That's more like it. Oh, there's another miss. Nope, ow, dang it. I got stuck on a tree there. Tried to run past him, but got stuck on the tree. That sucks, because took 10 damage there for no good reason. All right, well hopefully we'll be able to find some more goods to make up for that. More ammo and explosives, we'll take them. Ugh, not the best start here. Let's see if we can turn this around though. All right, what's in here? Single enemy. And a chest. 
So hopefully that crate has some good gear in it. What has it got? Nail box again, more explosives. Nail boxes aren't great items, because you can combine them to make nail ammo and nail bombs, but we don't actually want to make a nail gun because it uses our explosives up for something we don't really need. We do, on the other hand, want to uh, collect everything, and if we need to drop it later, we can. It's better to have and not need it than need it and not have it. So, let's keep looking around here. I'm not seeing too much yet. Oh, more enemies. Alright, this area looks like it's pretty empty. Which is too bad. Yeah. Not much in there at all. Alright, well, back out we go then. Alright, hang on a second. There is a secret over there. And that's why the map is wonderful. It makes it a lot easier to see those secrets. I didn't even notice that little crack in the wall, but... Since it showed up on the map, we have a big square there, which makes it a lot easier to see. So let's pop some grenades on the wall. Give it some distance, because those grenades will hurt you if you stand too close to them. What's in here? Ooh, a Panzerfaust. I'll take that. That's a rocket launcher right there. Okay. So, we have a rocket launcher. It's a single use only, but it's still pretty powerful, and we're going to need it later on, most likely. Probably going to need it on floor three, if anything is uh, going as expected. And that's a dead end. Okay, well, that's a nice little find there. And that's why we always need to look for secrets, because there's all kinds of wonderful things found in them. Alright, what else is there in here? I'm gonna go down this way then. We're still at over 100 health, so it's not like we're really in a bad spot. Oh! No! 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 Oh! That sucks. I must have scroll wheeled when I wasn't paying attention. And I tried to shoot the big guy and accidentally ate a whole bunch of healing items. Oh, that's the worst. Alright, well, at least it was canned food, I think, because it actually healed us. Oh. <laughs> I don't like doing that. That's scary. Make me waste my healing items, especially if that was like a... Uh, Ooh, hardware. Especially if that was like med kits. That would have been really bad because we were above 50 health and it would have just wasted them. I should probably move those somewhere else. Normally I put uh, green at the bottom, I think, but I like doing it this way. So you can easily get to your health if you need it, but that was unexpected. Bleh! Hopefully it doesn't happen again, otherwise I'll feel really bad about my organization's technique. Alright, water treatment complex. Let's keep looking around here and see what else we can find. We've got to go pretty quick. Hello, enemies. Alright. Lots of room to maneuver in here, which is nice. Oh, those enemies coming from behind, which is also interesting. Ow, missed him. Alright. I used to do a strategy against these guys where I'd shoot them once and then stab them once to save on any risk of taking damage, but I figure it's kind of better in the early game to save as much ammo as possible, so now I don't bother shooting them at all. Which might be a wrong choice, but I'm not sure. Either way, we're going to come look around for some more goodies. There's some more teleglitch. We have to be wary of pipes in the future, because they're going to start hiding swarms of enemies in them. But for now, it's not the most dangerous thing. And there's nothing here. Alright, back we go. Dang, teleglitches. Alright. Nothing actually in this little area, surprisingly enough. The Plankton Vats support yard is completely empty. Alright, what's over this way? Hello? There's a zombie over here. Whoop. Stinking zombies. They go so fast. There we go, he's stabbed. Good. Shotgun shells, I'll take them. What's this? An empty can, that's always useful. A tube, also useful. Pistol rounds and explosives, also always useful. That was a pretty good haul we got right there. Let's check this little room and see what's inside. It's a dead end! Okay, I think we've gone everywhere now? No, there's an area back down there we missed. Alright, alright. Gotta finish exploring this top area before we go down towards the teleporter. Of course, sometimes exploring everywhere winds up being much more damaging than it needs to be, because if you're exploring everything, a lot of the rooms don't have anything but enemies in them. <coughs> Excuse me. So you just wind up taking a lot of damage. But, some of them have wonderful secrets in them, so you have to really explore anyway. Take the risk and keep going. Alright. I will admit, though, I'm definitely not the best person playing this game, so my play will not be perfect, as you've probably been able to tell so far anyway. Let's reload that pistol before I forget. And here come some enemies. Get the stabbing harmed ready. Come on, stabbing. You got me that time, unfortunately. There we go, they're all stabbed. Good. None of them dropped anything lovely, though, unfortunately. We'll have to keep going. Alright. There's another one. Hello. 
Stabbed. Perfect. Now there's a canned meat over there, so we'll go grab that for sure. More health we have, the better. And... I think we head this way next. There's a zombie, two zombies in there, which could be a problem, depending on how quickly they manage to start dealing damage to us. Oh, only got in a couple little hits. That's not so bad. They are hard to deal with, though. And there's some more shotgun shells. Wonderful. We'll take those and leave these generators in peace. Alright, so I think we just have to go down now. It's really the only option we've got. Hello. Alright, found some more giant mutants. Well, normal mutants. And you're dead. Fantastic. We're down to 120 health again, which isn't wonderful, but we're still above 100, so we'll take it. <clears throat> and we found the teleportation room, it looks like. Just down there. There might be a zombie in here, but probably not. Yeah, and there we go. We found the exit. What's in here? Nothing. Alright, disappointing. And we found the exit teleportation station to support systems. So we're going to have to head in there and see what happens next. There we go. The smell of damp plankton brought back old memories of when I first came to the facility, idealistic and full of enthusiasm. If I had only taken the job on Athena 6, an ocean planet covered with warm tropical islands, life would have been a lot easier on that planet. They were producing personal companion robots over there, with designs ranging from French maids to personal entertainment tentacle monsters. Oh well. Anyway, next up is robotic hardware assembly. This was the place for tech workers and hardware-minded people, all dealing with nanochip wizardry and intersecting interesting metal bits. It's a good thing we were creating mostly separate parts here, not fully functional battle robots. I would not like to fight Militech battle robots. Well, that might just happen anyway, friend. Either way, that's our completion there. We have slightly less than 75% accuracy, two secrets found, we killed a whole bunch of enemies, and we will take it. So. I believe this is going to be the end of the episode, though. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor, playing a little bit of Teleglitch with you. If you've enjoyed today's episode, let me know what you thought about it in the comments. This is something a little bit different. No idea how far we'll get, but we'll try and keep going. Either way, thank you very much for watching, and look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye